All right, so episode two of the Sydney Locker podcast. Today we got Jonathan Noble, but we're just going to call him JT because that's how everybody knows. So, uh, yeah, go ahead, introduce yourself, man. Let us know how hey, you got started. Uh, yeah, JT, uh, on a journey of self growth. Let's get it. Hell yeah. Big steps so, in the future. Big steps in the future. Yeah, you're definitely, we're both taking those right now. So exactly. if you want to get into like how you got into the steps you're taking today and what you were doing before. Yep, yep. So uh, I graduated 15. And right when I graduated, uh, my dad got me in the union. So like uh, I was blessed with the opportunity where I was making, uh, making 50K a year at 18. So like growing up, my my parents didn't really spoil me. So when I started touching this money, I started spending it on clothes. I was smoking like uh, a quarter a day, every single day, maybe a bottle a day, fucking kicking it with the homies, just bullshit, playing 2K, fucking <laughs> on social media, maybe like eight hours a day, you feel me? Yeah, um, yeah just, you know, um and so when i really started touching this money i'm like fuck i just had this lifestyle and this lifestyle was predicated on other people's opinions uh lifestyle was uh predicated on uh a different set of consciousness like drugs type shit like i uh, didn't want to be like in my head um and just constantly filled with media just that's all i consumed and uh so it it built up a lot of anxiety because of the media because i was constantly comparing myself thinking that i need to like be more do more have more um saying uh being a victim saying my parents should have been rich they should have been part of a rich family and so say you know what i mean yeah, and uh, it, it was a so July two thousand seventeen. Even like three months before July, I started this routine where I'd wake up every day at eight a.m. Uh, my uh, room is above the garage, and I had no curtains at the time. So whenever the sun came up, uh, I woke up. And if it was like a hundred outside, I'd be it'd be like ninety five in my room. So I'd just be waking up all mad. Uh, first thing I do, go on uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, by ten a.m., nothing's new. Keep refreshing, refreshing. Waiting for something to pop off. Looking at all these millionaires and their lifestyles. Looking at like all these things. I wanted people going trending. Um, and it, it really it really proved to me that the reality that we do on a day-to-day is really who we are yeah. and all i was consuming was weed alcohol and media and i was a i was a toxic individual for my family for my girlfriends like um and it was just culture predicated uh so 10 a.m uh refreshing refreshing another popping off 11 having anxiety saying go do something why don't you go do something uh what do i want to do who do i want to kick it with movies or bowling uh what do i want to do uh, i don't know uh by 12 to 10 p.m till my mom went to sleep out of blood in my hand uh, and that, that was my quarter a day, you know what I mean? Maybe a half ounce a day, and just blowing through money, bro. And uh, that was my daily routine for like three months. And like one day in July, uh, I was like pacing in my room. I was so mad at myself. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? And uh, I'm like, you know, I, I need, I need something. So yeah. like. I kept saying, like, I, I know I need, like, some type of sign, right? And um, I was on Snapchat, like, 2 a.m. So 
I buy like Babe Supreme, Palace, and I buy a lot of uh, clothes. And homie JJ sews clothes. And I met him when I graduated. And I'm like, hey, bro, you got to work on my clothes. You got to do something. Um, finally, this day in July, he's like, hey, I got some time. Bring some clothes through. Uh, we'll talk about it. Um, I'm like, dope. Bring 10 t-shirts, three pairs of jeans, three shoes. I'm like, oh, this is going to be lit. Um, I walk into his room. There's two tables. Fabric everywhere. Writings all over the wall. And he's sleeping on the floor. And uh, he was saying that his uncle was kicking him out. His grandma said, your dream will never be shit. Go, get, go to school, get a job, do something. His mom is uh, doing prescription pills. And uh, one twin sister, the both twin sisters, where I guess were in um, I, one twin sister was a top murder case in Washington. And the other twin sister is not doing good. She's uh, trying to rebuild their life out of rehab. And he's right. saying, so he's saying, JT, I'll be bigger than Gucci, Louis Vuitton, anything. I'll sell to the day I die because I believe in it so much. He did a three-day fast and then went to go hike up a mountain. Uh, almost at, like in the middle of summer when it's like 105. And um, almost died of heat, heat stroke. And, like, when he was on top of the mountain, he said that, like, he talked to God. Like, God talked to him. And uh, he heard, like, pages, like, being flipped. You know how the, that sound? He was like, I just heard that. And God was just saying, I'm just writing pages in your book, JJ. Like, just, this is a new chapter. Just keep going. And um, that was, like, the wake-up so, um, call for you. Huh? That was, like, the wake-up call for you. So exactly, I'm over here, uh, have a career, have a 350Z living in, in a big ass house uh, with girlfriends smoking all the weed and think my life is hard. Think that yeah. I'm a victim and think that, so like when I saw what real life was, it really broke it down for me. Like, look, if you don't uh, provide or create or produce for what what you have up here you can't really you're just part of the the wave that everybody else makes instead of making their own wave and so that's where i'm like fuck like what do i do on a day-to-day -day? and that's what i did social media weed girlfriends uh, going to parties and i'm like all right change that up uh deleted all my social media um, stop eating fast food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I broke up with my, with my girl. Stop listening to rap. And, uh, even just those four alone just takes up so, so much time. And uh, I just replaced it with reading, meditating, working out, seminars, uh, YouTube University. It says YouTube, YouTube videos. <laughs> um, hiking, uh, yoga, just changed everything. Just, and it completely changed my life to where um, you can align yourself where you just manifest thoughts just like that. Like you want to manifest a girl, just think about it, say it, believe that you already got it and she's there, like she's coming to you, it's crazy. Like so, through the law of attraction. Exactly, and like gravity's real, like the law yeah. of attraction, that's real, it's gravity. <laughs> like, it's, but it's crazy how you sort of get that, that mental strength when you're able, able to get rid of all your habits. You know, like when you're on social media, it's, it's a habit, you know, you're waiting for something and it's designed for you to keep scrolling and keep checking stuff. Uh, rap, I mean, music nowadays is filled with drugs and sex and it's like, 
we we don't really stick to that lifestyle that a rapper might be living but it's still we're still listening to it right. you know right and getting and rid it's of also that also conscious it's yeah also conscious we don't even notice and replacing it with reading which is like working out for your brain right. and meditating right. and taking care of your health is what right. helps you break out of those habits but exactly how do you exactly. you you were lucky enough to have that experience with your friend right. that made right. you wake up but exactly. the majority of people that are still sucked into their phones and doing this day-to-day -day routine that's not healthy for their body or for their mind, how do, how do they snap out of it? You know, how do you realize? Uh, two states. Um, pain and trauma or joy and inspiration. Pain and trauma is like they get in a fight with a love member like a, a divorce or something like a, a, a divorce worthy fight that would really bring it into somebody's perspective um cancer or something something like life altering like a car accident those are like really events where you you see reality for what it is rather than how you want it to be uh, or join inspiration where you you know what you want and you actually meet somebody or see somebody that tells you like, look, you could do it too. Like, like, and that inspires you, builds up that energy enough for you to start executing. Um, they say that after 35, all your neurons are pretty much hardwired for your habits. Cause we've been driving, uh, putting on our shoes, showering, eating, like we, it's all in the same places. And like, we, we do those every day, subconsciously on autopilot and um so like if you're not as young as we are after 35 it's hard to rewrite habits unless those states happen yeah it's sort of you need one of those extremes for you to snap out of it exactly um unless the whole culture changes Unless, like, the powers to be, like, let's just say fucking Trump or Biden goes for a jog and, like, hey, you should go for a jog, too. <laughs> like, just, like, if it starts becoming that culture where, like, uh, but there's also that same, if everybody was nice, nobody would know what nice is. It's the same thing. It's like the concept of, of good and bad, like yin and yang, you know, you wouldn't know what good is if you don't know what bad is. You have to exactly. sort of measure it out. But exactly. yeah, that's sort of like sedentary and habitual lifestyle. It kind of started in America with mm. fast food, like eating portions are insane. Right. It's just everything, right. um, especially you know I, i'm not trying to flame this country obviously we're blessed to live here right, blessed. But it's just that it's that greed not just with money but with everything to have more right. you know like if you go to europe and you have coffee like literally the cappuccinos are like this big yeah. and here you yeah. they're all the size of a starbucks cup of coffee everything has to be more and people just aren't able to again like what you said see reality for what it is and be happy with what they are and chase something that's bigger than them you know but i think also about this country is that we're built off consumerism we're built yeah. off uh factories and farms and like they're producing and they just want us to produce they want us to they want us to give us give them our lives pretty much and like newspapers radio uh it's no different i feel like the people that create, invent, uh, that have the conscious ability to lead people, um, is pretty much their reality. All, everybody else's reality are just subject to conform, be comfortable, um, and live their um, the life that they that people set for them. Because, like, right. there's that saying. Unless you're building your own dream, you're building somebody else's dream. Yeah. So, like, I feel like because that what we eat uh, deteriorates our brain, and uh, 
the it, it's program and everything our schooling system our media our food even where it's programmed into our food just to de consciousness de just a customer just, exactly yeah um they say like even the this education system was made for like people that were going to go into factories you know that you're going to do the same thing every day like carnegie or something andrew carnegie like, created the bell system and just produce yeah. um and there's also sort of that set path that set lifestyle where you you go to school for 12 years and what do you do in school you're basically just your grade is basically just completing assignments and right. then you got to test every week or every other week but you're just you're still doing exactly what the teacher tells you and then after that you got to go to college you got to get a degree to get a job before a bachelor's was enough now you got to get a master's if you want to be able to put food on the table um and then you go to college and then you're in insane debt because it's ridiculous. I, I just saw something on why Harvard is so expensive. And as there were more financial aid organizations created and the, go the government was able to give people more money to go to college, universities just raised their tuition. So it's mm -hmm. sort of that same, same thing, just spend money and live that lifestyle. But nobody right. sort of breaks out of that. You know, right. if we were totally comfortable with college isn't for everybody. Some people are just meant to live a different life and the education system was more open, uh, you know, we'd have people that are doing what they enjoy, you know? Is, is podcasts like this going to be an outlet or is it going to be phased out by bigger media companies that have their agenda? Like, you know how like we want to wake people up, like have their power back uh, are these going to be more influential or do you think that uh beer commercials and um shit like that yeah it, yeah everything like i glad you mentioned that like alcohol commercials alcohol is one of the most dangerous drugs but you can get it anywhere i mean there's like opioids and pharmaceutical medications which are also deadly but it's like if you have a prescription you're paying a ridiculous amount of money it's okay right. um it, there's people like joe rogan you know who right. already you can't take them down but for me starting out you know who knows but yeah sort of get people to realize that you don't have to just live one certain lifestyle you know and parents aren't you know just teaching the same thing go to college do this but on top of it, you have to decide what you're going to do for the next 50 years of your life by the time you're 17, 18. Like, that's just not possible. And it's even less possible when you're not giving people the time to go out and learn about themselves. You know, that's something we don't talk, touch on. Like, we got to learn about everything in the world, but when do we get to self reflect, you know, learn what our passions are? Right. And on top of it, you got to decide what you're going to do for the next 50 years. It's, it's crazy. You're just, exactly. it's like, they say like 80% of the world lives a life of quiet desperation, you know? So like me, yeah. Uh, I, I had this premonition early instead of having a midlife crisis, but I was programmed by the schooling system, media, to want to buy $300 t-shirts and fucking uh spend seventy dollars a day on food i saw in a commercial um and it was just so uh toxic for me that it really started like messing with my mind and, and that's what's what's crazy now that we have social media and globalization we have more access to everything than ever yet people feel the emptiest they've ever felt right. Right. Uh, like we talked about this the other day, the Travis Scott burger, people yeah. really paying money for a burger yeah. that all they added was pickles and bacon. Exactly. Exactly. It's the name. And same thing yeah. with those like tight these yeah. brands, you know, it's, yeah. it's still going to clothe you. It's going to do the exactly. same thing, exactly. but that sort of exclusivity that's 
really doesn't have any real value to who you are, but people buy it because they don't know. That's the thing. They're not taught. We're taught we're not educated. You know, right. they don't know what right. actually matters. They don't right. know what what matters to them personally. Um, There's that saying, uh, they teach you what to think, not how to think. Exactly. Exactly. And you, you now that we have access to all this information and, and products and whatever it is, you try to fill that void with stuff that, again, doesn't really matter. Exactly. Exactly. No. And like our parents were just raised how their parents raised them. So like our parents don't know any better. They, they don't, they never seen a reality with the internet. Like, like we are like one of the first generations to actually really see the, the real internet and like maybe if they went to our higher education or just so happened to find a mentor or part of a rich family, they were conscious enough to know the difference between consumerism and production. Yeah. But because that consciousness, that knowledge, that, uh, that way of thinking wasn't provided in a mass, because they even said like in the early 1900s, like so, uh, so much percentage of the world knew how to knew how to and just in the united states knew how to read let alone like the world so oh, yeah. so like being able to read being able to be part of that that it, it's it, it's amazing to be so young for us and be able to be so conscious being aware of these these things that are really going on in the world instead of just saying hey i know my neighbor i know my co-workers yeah and i know my family just closing yourself off to what's what's around you your environment which but, i guess a hundred years ago that might have been okay because you didn't have the ability you know right. to learn more right. about what you're surrounded by but nowadays there's no excuse you know right. and, um and it and so much harder. Do you harder think the schooling teach. system will uh, teach people how to think for themselves, how to just discover uh, themselves? There are some countries that got it figured out. Like I know in Finland, kids don't even go to school until they're seven because they understand that a kid is meant to play. You know, that's what a five-year-old is meant to do. He's not supposed to be learning two plus two in kindergarten you know, or training him how to color inside of the lines. They're meant to just be experiencing that part of life. And then once they're seven, they go into school. So like some countries do have uh, more modern education systems, but it's so much harder too nowadays because again, our parents, they're, they're not that old. So they, they know how to use the internet and they have phones and whatnot. But our generation was born directly into that. Right. We don't know what life even is like without it. Right. So you have to just sort of do your own research and realize that it can, it, your life is healthier without so much technology and social media, but it's hard because we, again, we were born into that, right. that life. Right. We don't know anything other than, than that. So that's what this podcast is meant to do, you know, sort of detach you from that right. and just right. listen sometimes because all we do is absorb crap. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. like, I was kicking it with my little brother and his friend. And uh, he was like, man, my vocabulary, my vocabulary isn't there. I'm like, Oh, yeah, let me guess. You listen to rap, you listen to the rappers interviews. And you just repeat the memes that you see on your social medias. He goes, Yeah, that's all about right. I'm like, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Again, like, we're, we're taught how to, uh, we're taught, what did you say about the thinking? We're taught how, what to think, not how to But think. not how to think, right. So, like, we don't even, we know that there's a problem, but we don't know how to figure out what it is because we don't know right. how to think for ourselves. Right. But, yeah, it's crazy. Like, the jokes that your parents send each other on WhatsApp or whatever, <laughs> they tend to be, like, a paragraph joke or it tend to be something. <laughs> 
some sort of intellectual joke. But I mean, you go on Instagram and so the, some of those memes are just ridiculous. Like one word and a random picture, you know? That's so funny. Uh, so me- memes are a powerful, powerful tool nowadays. Oh, like yeah. I remember growing up, just like you could say like one saying and the whole class go crazy. Like Ooh. YOLO swag was the thing when I was in, in <laughs> elementary school. YOLO swag. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, when of course when you're limiting yourself to that kind of and of course that's not saying don't listen to music because right. uh, right. in my opinion music has helped me so much Very therapeutic. Um, and i listen to hours of music a day but again i used to listen to a lot of like rap and all that and now i listen to like indie straight up like i listen to like rex orange county and shit like that but it's a lot more peaceful you right. know the lyrics are right. about like love you know, right. it seems exactly. like small things, like you're just changing your taste in music, but exactly. you're constantly listening to it, you know, or yes. I'll read a little bit of a book. Yeah. That's a lot better than scrolling through memes on social media. When the a lot the of quickest way media. I feel like these people is like, if they listen to your podcast, driving, showering, or sleeping. Yeah. Because ultimately we do those three things no matter what. Like but, muscle and memory. eating. Mm-hmm. If people can listen to this type of uh, knowledge and this type of uh, conversation while they're doing these things that they do every day, it, it adds to their programming in a yeah. positive, impactful way. Yeah. And in the car, we're mostly listening to like music that's not good for us at home we're watching tv while we're eating um and when we're sleeping where we still have the tv on and yeah. we still our brain's still picking that up and we're all guilty of this like the other day i went to the bathroom i literally went to take a piss i got my phone in my hand and i'm like what the fuck am i doing like i'm just trying to take a piss why do i have, why do i need my phone you know i mean when you take exactly. a shit it's different because Exactly. You're there for five minutes. We have such short attention spans. Yeah. But yeah, just listening to this is uh, uh, they, they a say that refreshing our, air. Yeah, definitely a refreshing. Yeah. Um, they said that our attention spans nowadays are five seconds. I believe it. <laughs> Goldfish, bro, are six seconds. So... We're competing against goldfish. Yeah. And, we and it's amazing. Go. It's amazing that you could see it with like, you show somebody a video and within those first five, 10 seconds, they get bored and they'll hand you back the video, like not really listen, like look off, like uh, being able to capture somebody is harder and harder now because we just have everything at our fingertips. Yeah. And, and that, that's another thing that worries me. Well, I was going to touch up early on, on, on podcasts specifically. Um, most podcasts like tend to be like 40 minutes to an hour, but there are some like mine are probably going to be an hour to two and a half hours. And it's like, how do you get someone to stick around for that long? Right. Um, right. But like I used, I used to watch, video game videos like that's what i used to do on youtube or watch just short like 10 minute videos and i realized that like why some of them they'll give you a laugh you know it's entertainment nonetheless but what is it actually giving me you know like i'm at a crucial point in my life i'm 17 years old i'm about to be an adult i'm gonna have to start getting used to it and this is like this is what i'm doing so i started listening to podcasts even if it's nothing serious like about life or finances or whatever it might may be like it might just be a comedian being able to just sit down and listen for an hour to two hours, uh, it's a lot different and you're still going to learn something from it than if you're just exactly. watching some video game commentary. And the, yeah. the people that tend to comment on those videos, are it's a different demographic. It's different, way people. different. Yeah. And so just that little change that's not hard to make breaks you out of one habit and then you break out of another one and another one. Um, but yeah, listening to podcasts is, is great. So 
hopefully they said an uh, easier way to like break a bad habit is just add a new a better one just add like a good habit into your habits that yeah. will help you start cognitively thinking to yeah. where like damn i like this uh, it benefits me well why am i doing that uh, like like you but like you said like i, I watch video games but i i also like can watch this and i still get the same uh enjoyment and i'm learning something like right. it, it, it's cool that like people don't have to like like delete all social media like i did they can just Learn follow yeah exactly learn the discipline to live with it but like follow like some motivational quotes so business entrepreneurs or something like whatever they're into some artists like instead of just their friends just the stories that their friends are posting like instead just, of consuming that just a change exactly um yeah that's that's what uh happened with me but uh, uh, uh yeah, you don't have to delete social media to sort of change the habit of going on it and, and consuming that. But at the same time, I feel like you got to learn to live without something before you can learn to live with it. Right. So, um, and especially not even, not even for the sake of your own personal growth, the amount of like information they're getting from you and selling to third party companies or exactly. whatever, exactly. just thinking about it from like a security standpoint, you know, you also don't want to put everything out there. So if you do have social media and you're not going to delete it, don't make a spam account and post three times a day saying what you did. Cause not e I'm not even saying, cause nobody cares. I'll tell you, nobody cares. And, and trust me, cause I no used to do cares. that. Nobody, nobody gives a shit, but, um, it's just not well, the good fact that, that you know, there. who does care is Instagram. Oh, because that's when and they learn from you the most. Exactly. Yeah. That's my brother was just telling me about a spam account. It was my first time hearing about a spam account. Just to, like literally the conversation before this is crazy. Yeah. Um, it's just. But how do you tell someone like stop? Like that's the thing nowadays. If if maybe we weren't so sensitive, it'd be OK. But it's like, how do you tell a 15 year old girl like stop posting on your spam Insta? Cause we don't care, but also like, and in, 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 in a way that you're trying to like, tell them like, this isn't good. Uh, like, how do you tell them without getting canceled? Like, Oh, you're a piece of Honestly, shit. Like, unless you're living a lifestyle that they look up to. They're not going to listen. Or like, or like they like really respect you. It's really hard. Yeah. Because like we all play like, it's our reality that like, yeah. uh, and, and then when we tell people to do it, they want to do the opposite. You know, we, we know that feeling. Our parents tell us to do something. We want to do the opposite. But th that's, that's normal. That's, you know, adolescence. <laughs> yeah. But even, but I feel like all these adults are just big ass kids. Like we are more of adults than they are. Like I know 16 year olds still at the bar gambling spending their life savings at the bar and but like for example again this is not like a thing that i i i, I used to brag i'm not gonna lie when i was in middle school it was something i would have used to brag but as i get older you know i've sort of have learned from it, this experience and it's, it's traveling you know i've been so blessed to be able to go to other countries and uh my family never did like a traditional vacation never did a tour, never did any of that. Like we'd rent our own car and drive around the country, you know, stop at little hotels. Yeah, never I that's dope as well. yeah, but like people these days, when they, when they do have the money to let's say go and travel, they'll go to a resort for like a week, right. all inclusive, or right. they'll go on a cruise or they'll go to Disneyland, which I'm sure is entertainment. It's relaxing. It's good. But like people again, have no value for, for learning for culture it's, the, no it's that comfort right, exactly. it's that comfort like people go to mexico to a beautiful resort spend a week there on the beach getting massages and mimosas right. but go to the inside of mexico and see what it's like 
Right. Like, incredible. Bodies hung upside down on freeways, like. Right. But they don't. They also don't want to know because it throws you off. But that's what that's what we need, you know. People need to expand their perspective and sort of know what's going on rather than just live their own life. And again, that's like consumerism and individualism. It's like you figure yourself out, I'll figure myself out. We don't we don't even we don't even talk to each other in the store anymore, you know? Uh, to our neighbors even. Yeah. I, I don't I just moved houses a year ago, but in the last house I lived in nine years we went to like a party a year at my neighbor's house and that's it. But we didn't even know who the fuck we were. Right. Right. It's crazy. Um, yeah. And, and other societies are different. Like I, I'm Spanish. And when you go to Spain, uh, there's, there's a bar culture. Like everybody goes to bars and has a beer or whatever it is that you have your breakfast there. And half the time you don't know who the guy sitting next to you is, but you end up talking to him for an hour anyways. People are a lot more social, a lot more open. And and we don't have that here, you know? No, no, we don't. And it, it, it's crazy that it, so uh, it, it would take alcohol strictly for like people to really be social and open. Like if you go to a park or something, like they don't really say, hey, how are you doing? Like, hope you have yeah. a great day. None of, none of that. Or you just stare at each other, mad dog each other and walk past each other. And uh, it's crazy that, like, even, uh, like, at the grocery store, like, if somebody's in your way, like, we don't really, some people just don't have common courtesy. They're just never opening the door. And that's where I go, like, how, how were they raised? Well, what, yeah. what type of environment were they, were they in where they thought that that was okay? Which probably in that environment was okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Say like, yo, can you move her instead of, hey, can you excuse me? Like, uh, we're, we're shy and, you know, we're told to not, we're, we're almost scared of talking to people we don't know when yeah. like, oh, he might be this, he might be that. But I mean, 90% of people don't have bad intentions. You know, it doesn't hurt to talk to a stranger. Um, yeah. Uh, I was going to touch on something. Sorry, continue. I'll try to remember my thought, but. When was the last time you talked to a stranger? Shit, I don't know. Oh, I, I remember what I was going to say. I was say, like, you brought up the park. Like, you know, there's right. different families set around the park and, and nobody's really talking to each other. But we're, we're almost doing it on purpose. Like, that's something we're doing consciously. We're consciously staying away from people we don't know. Like, when you go to church, you're going to find a seat like if you're in a row, you're good, you're gonna skip a seat and then sit with your family. People yep. don't you know exactly. what I'm saying? The movies, everything. It's like even exactly like when you go to the movie theater, you're even uncomfortable to sit directly next to someone. You skip skip a couple seats. Like that's exactly. almost awkward. And it doesn't make sense. Like we're all just living the same life. Right. But we look to be separated. It, right. I don't know why. I don't know how that happened. It's uh consumers. Uh, yeah. There's like this study where uh, the square footage of everybody's houses increased, but the the number of closer friends they had decreased. Like we start replacing stuff for people, and and like just a generation ago, our parents, the, all they had were people. They like your family, and like the, that was that was your everything. But now, like people don't even care. Like. They say, fuck it, I'm going to be on my own. Like, yeah. It's, it's or just, it's just family. Right, right. And, and a lot of times, like, we, we don't realize that our families is, and again, this might, this might either be a wake-up call or it might offend somebody, but sometimes it's our family who's most toxic to us, right. you know? Right. But we don't, we stick to our family. And, and sometimes that's not the best thing. For some people it is. For some people it's not. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, again, it's that same thing, putting value on having more rather than just having what matters, you know? Like, and, and it's hard to like be in a family where that culture is everything. And then you yeah. try to say like, no, like I want to follow my dream. I want to do something else. And, like uh, work for like what I, what I need to do for like my future. And then it's just not, it's not it. Like not go to college. That's another thing, like most people, let's say you, you wanna go to college or you, like, 
for example, a dream you can chase without going to college, like you want to be an actor or something. But like, let's say you want to chase a dream and you can go to college for it. It's like, if you're picking a major that isn't going to make you 80K at least out of college, that's like ridiculous. You know, do business, do finance, do engineering. It's like, we don't even value arts anymore. Right. Right. Um, again, like in school, you know, theater kids are considered weird. Uh, which to an extent they are, but really they're doing their own thing. You know what I'm saying? Like all those millionaire actors that we praise were those weird theater kids, but they were doing what they liked. You're doing what people are making you think you like just because it's going to make more money. And at the end of the day, if you're getting a college degree, you're going to be making enough to live. There's no way you're not, unless you have seven kids, you're going to do fine. But it's just, exactly. since, you're, since you're making 20K less, it's like, nah, don't do it. But what is that 20K if you're going to live miserably compared to what, doing what you enjoy, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And um, it's, it's crazy that, like, my, even my cousins are guilty of it, that they're nurses because their aunts, their, their parents were nurses. Like, uh, my uncle wanted to be an engineer because my grand my grandfather was an engineer like um the yeah they're following a path following a legacy but is it truly why what makes them happy are they are they happy doing it or is it just a paycheck to them and that's what i feel like is different between success what are the chances you're really going to be happy doing the exact same thing your family did um, and yeah, that's crazy. Like, again, some kids work their ass off in high school to get into college and then they get into college. It's like a relief. They start going to parties, start to, like kids die in college from binge drinking. Um, and their majors like finance, like when you go through colleges, uh, normally the major that studied the most is something with business or marketing or something. And that's fine. Somebody got to do the job, but not everybody. Right. And, and it's like, it's those kids that are going to college and studying film or psychology or something different that are, you know, enjoying it the most. So. How, how do we communicate that those are outlet? How, how, how do you make those attractive enough where like, oh, I can, I can be that, I can do that. Like, I feel like we would have to innovate something like in that industry or in that yeah. sub like topic where and like pe- people are also gosh. so scared to to do something they enjoy because it might be harder like for example me doing a podcast you know i got like three subscribers on this bitch but it's like someone who has a million at some point had three subscribers but it's yeah. the one that didn't stop posting that got there but it's like that's nice. that scene is too much work you know, right. Right. Um, people are scared to commit those to those things, even if it's what they like, they'd rather just take an, an easier route that they think is going to provide more for them. Uh, but it's again, it's like, we're so we're so uh, we, we embrace like politics and shit like that, like changing a president isn't really going to change the country. Like what we need is a change in mentality. Right. Um, and that, that that's probably begins with reforming the education system. But it's like, how do you change that mentality from valuing money and amounts of things and, and greed and just changing it to doing it what you love? If, and on top of it, if everybody was doing what they love, overall society grows. Because if, if you have people becoming doctors and engineers and lawyers, you know, prestigious jobs, but half of them don't like it, how many of them are actually putting 100% in? But if everybody's putting 100% in, even if it's a job that's not considered as elite society works better like how many doctors there are plenty of good doctors out there but a lot of them are just out to get your money especially like there's been so many cases like with doctors that just prescribe opioids and make millions of dollars it's like i'm sure that guy didn't study medicine to help people it's crazy how how do we how, how do we make being an artist, being um, a teacher, yeah. being um, a farmer, uh, being a firefighter, 
as prestigious as a doctor, lawyer, or engineer? How do, how do we? Well, we can thank Netflix for making the social dilemma. Because <laughs> <laughs> if everybody that watched that, half of them deleted social media, we start seeing some changes, um, which would be great. So that, that's the thing. The people that have the power and the money are doing things to get more power and more money. But there are people like Netflix that are making those documentaries or people like Bill Gates that are putting money into scholarships and, and helping countries, uh, less developed countries around the world. But it's, it's unfortunately in the system we live in, it's those people that are on top that have to start making the changes. Um, so uh, there's the saying, don't worry about the kids, focus on the elders. Because ultimately those people like the kids, yes, for the next generation, but the elders right now is affecting the present. And the present is where, where we need that change. You know what I mean? Because it, ultimately, if we change our political system to more conscious individuals, it's just a trickle down effect where it's inevitable that the schooling yeah. system, the everybody will just be happier. You know what I mean? And And, and kids have all this value for going to school and getting good grades but how many kids value teachers right exactly it's like ridiculous if you want to be a teacher like you're going to make 40k like first of all if you're going to be a teacher you know you don't care right. and second of all i'm getting three months off in the summer which is sick but um yeah those are that that's what we need we need a, a passion driven society and that might also change uh, we also can't be asking for people to know their passion by 18 you know like on snapchat which is the only social media i've kept because i really just use it to message people or it's easier to send pictures whatever which i'll probably get rid of too eventually but <laughs> now when you scroll through stories like you get advertisements and i get these advertisements for like swipe up and take this career test career mm -hmm. test what the right. fuck like on my act I scored highest on math and I hate math. I'm definitely not going into no math related job. But it's like, if I were to take one of those career tests, they'd tell me like, oh, you should be an electrical engineer. It's like, what is a little quiz on the internet? You know, it's crazy, but you've seen the social dilemma. Those quizzes yeah. are just to, to fucking profile. Learn about you. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You're not That's actually gonna learn from anything. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, it's, it's crazy. They're just here to profile you. Or, or have you seen all those stupid quizzes that are like, take this quiz and see if we can guess what state you live in? Like, right, have you seen right, that? Like, exactly. Are, like, but people are taking them. You're not actually yep. going to get anything from it. They're going to get more. It'd be stuff. different. Like, there's actual an app where you can take surveys and they pay you. But, yeah. like, even not then, much. I'm like, I, I was thinking about it. I'm like, nah, that's too fucking sketch. Yeah, because now they know everything about you. And you're gonna, exactly. you're gonna feel targeted. Exactly. Definitely. Well, um, ultimately, we are already targeted. That if I have a business, uh, and I wanted to sell you this shirt, that all I needed to know that you're 16 to 18 in the Las Vegas area, and um, you looked up a T-shirt, and yeah. I can target you directly because that information's out there. Even if like you s swipe your credit card for a t-shirt that they have that track. You're gonna get more advertisement. Yeah, like when you search up, like you search up shoes on Amazon, not you go on websites and websites have like little square ads, you're gonna get shoes. Right. You're gonna get right. the same thing. Exactly, exactly. Um, and it's, it's crazy how fast it is. Like we could be talking even in a Zoom call, you can just and then go to Google and then whatever. I mean, I hope they're listening to me. I hope they are, because they're going to be like, damn, they woke. Like, we need them working for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it, again, and, it, and it's only going to get faster. It's only going to get smarter. Uh, that's what they're doing. with Starlink and what Elon Musk is doing, having yeah. the whole world on the internet. I, I think we were talking about that in the, the first podcast, I was like, mm -hmm. that sort of technology can be used to do so much good, but it's right. it's all that good that's also going to do all the bad, you right. know? Right. And then there yeah, are people that goes back to the yin and yang paradigm. 
Mm -hmm. that like do we do we, it's inevitable like we have to see some fucked up shit to know what some good shit is yeah facts um but yeah that that shit is it's scary um some people are always are going to abuse technology uh you know you know those movies like ready player one yeah i feel like that's what the world's going to come to do you, you think so yeah if, or if, like, um, you remember the Black Mirror episode where she had a social score to get a new house? And and then she goes to like her friends, she's trying to go to her friend's wedding? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I literally just watched that like a month, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Bro, and like, so oh they're doing that in China right now already. If you throw a cigarette butt on the street, AI tracks that shit and knocks down your score. And like... If you have such a low score where you jaywalk enough and do cigarette buds that you can't fly anymore. It, it's interesting. Like, uh, I, I don't know if, if other Asian countries, but I don't know, like Singapore and, and China, have, I'm pretty sure the name is legalism, where like the consequence for a crime is a lot. I didn't know Singapore um, was doing it too. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. And, and no, 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 they're not doing that. But I'm saying like, for example, if you spit out gum on the street, like you yeah, could get exactly. locked up for that. Exactly. That's like the, crazy. The, the consequence is a lot more severe than the crime. That's um, crazy. That system wouldn't work here because oh. people people don't even want to wear masks in a pandemic. Right. So you're not going to tell them that don't spit gum on the street. Like they're going to be like, that's my freedom right there. <laughs> but <laughs> um, in, a, in a country that's a lot smaller, like Singapore, that system works and it keeps everything in track. You know, everything's impeccable. Yeah. Everything works just fine um that's um, another my thing. dad went to china in uh last year to go to the the dota tournament he works at dota tournament every year and uh, it was in shanghai and they had posters all around the city saying china 2025 and what my dad asked like well what is it what is it talking about and china wants to be the economic superpower like and the biggest influence in 2025 they probably will yeah there's all this we're on china shit like they're gonna be unstoppable you know yeah. especially with the amount of people they have and in their communist days china was really just farmland but look at what it is now exactly. i mean it's developing at crazy speeds the dollar probably isn't even going to be the the global currency i'm, I'm not I think sure it's what gonna be crypto really half of china i haven't read a lot on that Half of China pays on like WhatsApp and like shit like that. Like they don't even use dollar bills anymore. They just smart pay and like facial recognition to pay. And that's what like the world's going to look like. Uh, they're already putting computer chips in like people where you can just scan your hand and pay. Yeah. Yeah. That, I guess that sort of, um, I was, I told you the other day, my idea of like abstracts. That right. kind of goes to right. show you how little true value money has when it can literally, you could do a transaction through the air, you know? Right. It doesn't exactly. actually have any tactile value. It's just right. a number. Exactly. Um, you, um, yeah. Have you been watching like any Elon Musk like on Joe Rogan's? No, I haven't. Um, the newest one, he talks about uh, Neuralink a lot more in depth he said by 2030 by minimum it's going to be fda approved where you can put computer chips in your brain and if you if me and you wanted to talk japanese on this podcast then all we had to do is just go download the file for japanese and then we can fucking talk and and here's the thing um already with tvs smartphones we've seen how technology leads people to live a life in comfort and if, if you've learned anything from youtube uh, university is that discomfort is where we're most creative exactly. when we're not happy with where we are that's where we actually start thinking because exactly. during quarantine is when i was really at my lowest especially going through some me family too. Shit. But that's, me too. that's something else but it's it's when i was at my lowest that i was able to start figuring out what i liked what I should do, how I should change what I'm doing. 
And if we just give people the ability, like, oh, go download this file and you can learn Japanese, there's going to be no incentive for people mm. to go out and do anything in their life. Mm. So like language classes, scratch that, you know, driving a car, learning how to drive a car, scratch that. You're just going to put it on your phone or you're even just going to think about it and a car's going to pull up to your house and drive you to, right. where, to where you need exactly. to go. Exactly. All these things that we're learning, they're going to have zero value. It's going to be so easy. And then what are you going to do to get paid? What are people going to do when every, every skill is just downloadable? Uh, that's what scares me. Uh, it, it sounds beautiful. It does. And I think that's pretty cool because the amount of power we're going to be able to have to just be able to talk to anybody in any language from wherever is going to be insane. But at the same time, people won't have incentive to do anything because it's just going to be, I, I don't know how Neuralink is going to work. But it's just so be I think that's why Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Richard Branson are really pressing pressing the issue for going to Mars. Because if we can just make it to Moon and Mars, it'll be an incentive enough to be like a Star Wars or a, a Star Trek, you know what I mean? Be like, because that's an incentive. We can send a bunch of people to different planets, like make spaceships in space, you know what I mean? Like we could really put these people to, to work still with well with technology it's just the incentive like you're saying like yeah how are we going to make this attractive enough where people can look forward to the future instead of thinking that it's going to be a dystopia like i talked to a lot of people and they all think it's we're going to like a, a terminator a i robot um uh, ready player one type of reality and i'm like why can't it be wakanda why can't it be uh <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah 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 and and and, and that's what's crazy um th this it's so simple but it's those people choosing to think that life is going to be a dystopia which is what's going to lead us to a dystopia exactly um because technology has the ability to either lead us to a dystopia or it can lead us to a utopia if we use it right. But it's like, what has made people so negative? You know what I'm saying? If everybody started thinking we can make this a utopia, we fucking will. But when everybody's just like, oh, it's a Have you ever shit. seen a positive movie though with technology? Not I really. really. Not really. Exactly. I feel like that's why those movies back in the 80s and 90s were all like, fuck, like, to just scare the fuck out of people. Have you seen that one movie? I, I don't know how it's pronounced. I think it's like Ex Machina or Ex Machina with like the girl robot. Oh, bro. That's a good ass movie, bro. Yeah. And it's like, she's like animated, but there's that old dude that like built her. Is that yeah. the same movie? In like some mansion in nature. And like, there's like an intern that goes. Oh, so the one on Netflix. No, I haven't seen that one. Okay, you should watch it, but I guess it's sort of going to show how smart artificial intelligence can get um, and how it can destroy us. But yeah, again, it's like what I'm saying, like, if you told those friends, all you need to do to make sure the world is not a dystopia is think that it's not going to be a dystopia. Because exactly. if you think that exactly. it can be a utopia, you might start working towards that. And I'm going to always think that way. And I'm not saying I'm going to be the one to make a change in the world because you change one person at a time uh, and we all got to work together for that. But like, let's say in the future, like this podcast blows, you can use those sort of followings. Again, it's the people that have the power and the money and the influence that are going to be the ones that can lead, you know? Mm -hmm. And so hopefully that's the goal that, that just a change in mentality is what we need. Um, and if we're going to go to Mars, uh, again, I haven't done a lot of research on that, but if Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are talking about, surely it's something that's possible. But Bro. that's going to be sort of a fresh start, you know? So there's two, there's two theories on why they're wanting to go to Mars. Dystopia, where they lost all hope, global warming's inevitable, our grandchildren will not survive, we need a new planet. Or Utopia, where we become a Star Trek, the Jetsons, so Star Wars, where we can like uh, so yeah. so it's two it's two ways and 
um, we just need that change in leadership, that change in consciousness of yeah. like getting these people motivated for. And, and people that are also looking towards the future. Cause when you have like 80 year olds in government that really are just trying to make the most money in their last 10 years, they're not going to give a shit about global warming or the future right. generations. Right. And exactly. shit, I'm not saying kick them all out and put in 20 year olds, but again, that change in mentality, um, it might even be too late for the whole global warming situation unless we were to start tomorrow, but exactly, exactly. Happen. We need to start tomorrow. Um, but yeah, uh, that's another thing that concerns me. Obviously it concerns me, but it's not going to be like, I'm going to think, Oh, it's going to go to shit. But when you start establishing larger societies on Mars and, you know, an actual mass of people moves there, what are you going to, like, how are you going to start separating classes? What are people going to do for occupations? Like, how's money going to work? Are we going to draw borders? That's another thing. Um, so, so we can, we can touch on this. For example, the Neuralink being able to teach people different languages, right? Like if we were able to talk with someone from Portugal, Russia, um, some African country, whoever, we were all able to talk and communicate as if it was one language. Would we go to Mars and create borders? Could we all just exist? Um, There's a um, uh, documentary slash TV show on Netflix called Mars. And mm -hmm. SpaceX is like the main people, but it's a lot of engineers. And then it's like a TV show where it's like, uh, 2033 and it's like the first spaceship the first crew that goes to mars and they like set up a like and it's crazy and it's like um but it's crazy to think that these companies have 100 year plans yeah like it, it's crazy that even for me to think of how i want my next five years to be let alone my next hundred years of my legacy and what like, like it, it's amazing to me how people break down reality and time and uh, goals and life to where they're like, all right, it's going to take us 30, 10 years, 2030 to get the infrastructure enough to send some stuff to Mars. Uh, then it's going to be from 2030 to 2040 to actually build that civilization and then yeah. like it's crazy to be in and the fact that we have the internet and go ahead and just look these things up and listen to these people talk about it just like how they can look up this podcast it's amazing that like you can be part of that group you don't have to be in that bloodline or yeah. that college degree or you don't have to uh, just so happen to meet the right person at the bar uh, like you, you could just Google search whatever you like, whatever you want, you're there. Uh, and you're there. Yeah, um, that's that's another thing, which is uh, like some people say, every no plan ever goes entirely to plan. So yep. it's like kind of scary how we can plan for fifty years, a hundred years again uh, ahead, but what's going to happen in between that might throw it off completely. Um, what do you think about the the Simpsons? I'm I'm not sure what what do you mean. You know how they predicted Trump. They oh predicted yeah. Trump. So you well, like. Look, I'm not I'm not doubting that that might be like some crazy shit, or again, could just be coincidence. Uh, I'm gonna go with coincidence, but I'm not gonna limit myself to saying that's all it is. Because I just I saw something the other day where it was like, we say that time travel doesn't exist, but that it could exist. So if it exists let's say it's created in the year 2150, that means it exists today. Cause that dude in 2150 could come back to 2020 yeah. and, and know what's going on. So technically yeah. time travel um, would exist if we can say it can exist in the future. But that's some I was crazy watching shit, this uh, physicist. He was saying, this is the sun, this is the earth. And we spinning this way, but the sun is also spinning around the Milky Way the, the black hole in the Milky Way. And so that's three times the speed. And instead of us going in like this, we're actually going in a loop like this 
through space. And that from, from my hand to take right here, that was, it just went 80 million miles a second because of how fast we're going around in the galaxy, let alone. And that, that's something that would uh, make people feel really small, which is something we need because humans are uh, especially self-centered. Yeah. So knowing how big I've the universe thing is. Where it took us 10 years in space to finally have an astronaut decide, I'm going to take a picture of the Earth. Like, they're so fixated on the outside that it took them 10 years in space to finally take a picture of the planet and see how finite just our planet is. Yeah. And yeah. it's crazy that we're so fixated on everything else, but when we look inward, like, we realize how... Small we are. Yeah. Um, and, and that's like, there's this philosophical thought called nihilism, where it's like, you kind of know how small you are. So you're like, ah, nothing matters. Like I'm literally, I mean, this isn't, this isn't false. Like this is a fact, like you're literally just a speck in time and what the history of the universe is and, and the size of the, the visible universe, at least like you're literally nothing, uh, which leads people to do nothing with their lives, but you got to take it in a positive way and think if i'm so small why don't i you know make the most of it um exactly. Which, exactly. which again when we're entering a society that again is planning for 50 or 100 years and planning to go to mars and meanwhile i'm like on this hippie lifestyle like trying to embrace the whole live in the present you know because <laughs> i don't like tomorrow i could say like i'm gonna go on a run in the morning and my friend calls me my whole day is gonna change but i can't predict that right now so right. all I know is the present. If I'm living in the future, I'm never going to enjoy anything. Right. Um, but but yeah. on that same paradigm, you you plan out vacations. Yeah. Months in advance, you know what I mean? Like um, when the homie JJ woke me up, he was like, we're witches, bro. I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> He's like, what do witches do? I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? He's like, they write things down, they say it, they believe it, they work towards it, and guess what? It becomes real. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, like the, that's what that's all we gotta do. Like all these people, they just thought about it hard enough, wrote it down, planned it, got people supporting the idea, and just like, all right, this is what we're gonna do. But again, you you have to like enjoy the now. Cause like what about all yeah. the people that plan vacations and then COVID hit? Yeah. Or I mean that's just thinking about vacations. People were going to get married. There are pregnant women. Yeah. Like, what happened to that? You know, uh, how the most natural thing, uh, a virus, threw everyone off. Yeah. And they were planning. a big thing about that is that, about being present, is that nobody really does it. Yeah. Everybody's either living in the past or living in the future. And like nobody really just like looks around and looks at their surrounding and like takes some deep breaths. And that's that's what they say. Like living in the past is what leads you to depression, and living yeah. in the future is what leads you to anxiety. anxiety. Yeah, exactly. Um, where where living now is just living. That's all you really have to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the whole the whole Mars thing overall is, is crazy. Um, but like, you know how I mentioned, are we going to draw borders? Are we going to separate ourselves by nationality or by race? Um, again, yes, unless we have that change in mentality, you can plan for government and life on Mars, but what about people's mentality? Will people still be racist? Will people still stick to their, to their own kind? Well, we still care about countries and nationalities. Like I think nationalism is one of the most dangerous things <laughs> in a global peace, I guess, because my country is better than yours. Like, so what? If we take and that that's on- That's what we were talking about the other day is how nationalism is really disrupting like negatively in our culture. Yeah. But like we have globalization, we have a global economy, and then we have global warming, which is a global weather pattern 
global but we don't, pandemic. Don't, exactly. And uh, a global pandemic, but we, we look at our nations with border, but when we look at Earth, there's no line. Uh, it's just exactly, what, yeah. Uh, so it's one of those abstracts again like you can't like for example the the money being transferred through a chip in your hand right. uh again you need money to live so it's necessary but when you realize like that's just an, an a transaction in air and it has no real value you don't right. attach yourself to money same right. thing how when you realize that a border was something that some dude in power just drew out on the map you won't you won't attach yourself to your country or to your to nationalism. Um, attaching yourself to all these things that are abstract is what's damaging to the world. And if we don't change that here, then we're just going to carry it on to Mars. And if we're really going to be living in Mars in a hundred years, uh, we got to go there and take that fresh start seriously, because or else we're going to fall into the same thing. And then, fuck, we're gonna we're gonna run out of resources on Mars, and then. Elon Musk Jr. is going to take us to some other universe by then. Who knows how we're going to be able right. to travel through space. But yeah, it's and just that. It's crazy that we're living in this time right before that transition. Mm -hmm. That we get to see what the world looks like without space, without robots walking around. Like how we, like our parents never grew up with social media and we did. Right. Our kids are gonna grow up in a reality where there is no such thing yeah. as robots or like spaces. <laughs> That's just gonna be regular, like artificial intelligence and everything. Exactly. Um, so, what do you tell me about what you think about artificial intelligence and machine learning, quantum computing? I, I'm not the most informed on it, but again, it's like we need a change in mentality to know how to use it because mm. uh, people are always going to abuse something like that. Uh, and again, we need to know what it is life, what life is like without it to learn to live with it. Uh, so as long as we're using it for something positive, uh, it's good for productivity or whatever it may be. But again, if, if it's going to do things like download all languages and create alternate realities, we're going to be detached from the present and lose all incentive to do something good with your life. So what but, about... Um self-driving cars what are we going to do with all the truck drivers cad ubers um that's the thing like as you as we we don't need truck drivers anymore but we need more people making the self-driving trucks mm. um not to hate on a truck driver again you're you're just another person but does does a truck driver today have the engineering knowledge to create artificial intelligence? No. Do you but, believe um, that artificial intelligence will take over doctors? I hope not. Um, Cause that's another thing. For example, I, I want to major in philosophy, which I'm pretty sure is it's considered a humanity. You know, it's not like STEM, like science, math, technology, uh, like social sciences, education, philosophy, those are humanities. Right. And I, I read this book called The Fuzzy and the Techie. The fuzzy mm -hmm. being like the sort of art person, you know, English literature, and the techie being, of course, math, technology, and all that. Right. And just recently, which I see this in a very positive way, which people that think it's going to be dystopia because of technology should read the book. Uh, but basically, tech companies are holding in higher esteem people that have majors in film and in philosophy and in literature because that education in humanity is what they need when making technology. So if we're going to make artificial intelligence yes. like that, right. uh, you can't just have a, a robot working on a human body because every right. case is different and a robot's right. only going to know the textbook thing, but a doctor, only a human has that ability to make those sort of last second decisions on, on a human or be able to have that, that feeling or instinct that a robot can't have. And that saves lives. Right. So I hope not, but we need people working in that industry. There needs to be a balance, you know, if it's people that just know math and science and they're programming robots, those robots, like, you know, they're not going to work for society. You, you know, it's humanity. crazy though, bro, that uh, no doctor can see an x-ray in all different shades of gray to see a tumor like a computer can. 
Um, yeah. No doctor is going to be able to take every single prescription pill, mix it with this blood type, time with this blood type, yeah. and mix it with another another prescription pill. Like it's just impossible for a human to do that. Lawyers, ninety um, percent of their job is looking through emails, looking through credit card swipes, locations, like all that could be automated. So lawyers can be automated. The, and um, again, there's cashiers. Cashiers, um, oh, yeah. taxi drivers, um, all all those are replaceable. But when I when I think it comes to uh, a a job as important as a doctor, I hope not, because there's always that sort of like human instinct. Like my mom had a tumor, and I'm pretty sure like there was like a less than ten percent chance they could have left right. it alone. Um, right. They could have left it alone, and if it was there, which they weren't one hundred percent sure, but if it was there it would have kept growing and who knows, maybe she wouldn't have checked on it. It would have been too late, but he took that 10% chance and it ended up being there and it could probably save their life. That's and I, I'm, I'm thinking, can a robot or artificial intelligence defined or, or created by a scientist or a mathematician, can it do that? Does it have but, that human interest? But if we have no, that technology be- so readily available where that x-ray doesn't cost money, it could it could be okay. You're just gonna get the X-ray no matter what. Rather, but he took he you... took a chance, you know. Right, right. The the a, the AI is just gonna say ninety percent. It's not there. We're gonna leave it. And right. what would have happened? Um, that's true. Again, that's like true. yeah, AI and and what you're talking about could really help society and. Uh, it will it would eliminate a lot of jobs. I don't know how that would work. You know, I'm not a politician, uh, but so that's what I just that's don't. What I don't I want space. I, I don't want society to lose its humanity. I think that's mm, something mm, we're already losing, mm, and we're we're already so losing what, it so much. We're headed. What defines humanity? People. Is it the literature, the culture, the music? I think so. The I art. Think so. Yeah, I definitely think so. Like, if you read books, like. Um, Dostoevsky, like the Russian psychologist or something he was like, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. art. Like those people that, that would write those books are the, our founding fathers who wrote the constitution. Like those sort of things weren't done by a mathematician or just right. hard knowledge. You know, there right. was humanity in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it's necessary. We right. need music. Nietzsche said right. life without music is a mistake. Right. Uh, are we just gonna, we could, we could 100% have artificial intelligence putting notes and, and creating beats and creating music. Is it going to be the same though? Is it going to have emotion? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I've we'll seen a documentary, to- bro, that they compared real orchestras to artificial intelligence orchestras and showed people with like, that actually listens to like Beethoven and stuff and they couldn't tell the difference. Which is scary. Cause it's like, that's going to have a lot of power um, yeah. if we can teach artificial intelligence emotion. And weren't you the one who was telling me that artificial intelligence are making faces that are, don't even exist? Which is something a human can't do. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, insane. Insane. Or like video games even nowadays, like with the new console coming out, do you, like you see how realistic they are? Um, all on a computer, like they put those motion balls, they put yep, the suits yep. on, and uh-huh. then they like take pictures from all angles and they download it onto a computer and they can create the motions. They can create a human. I swear it's gonna be Ready Player One. That's the thing, like when, imagine how advanced video games can become. You sent me a video which was like, esports is the industry of the future. Yep. If people get attached to these sort of alternate realities in video games or whatever, it's something that, again, is going to detach us from humanity and we're going to lose so, all incentive to do what matters here. Do you think we live in a simulation? Or do you think this is base reality where this is the first computer, first conversation? Or- this is called the simulacra. <laughs> yeah, the simulacra. <laughs> which, which is... Um, Actually, I guess I could say the, the definition of the podcast name. A simulation is something that recreates something that's real, like a farming simulator or an airplane simulator. And a, simula- a simulacra is something that recreates something that's not real. 
It's like nobody can, can draw a picture of God. We don't know what he looks like. So a picture of God would be a simulacra, um, which is kind of why, why I like the name for this, because we can talk about things we don't know. That's right. what matters. Um, I like that. But I don't know. I don't, again, theories on what we are, like simulation, whatnot. Like uh, the Matrix, for example. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I'm like agnostic in that. Like I can't, I'm not going to deny it, but I'm not going to say it's what I believe in. But it, it's like one of those things we just don't know. Um, and and that, that's another thing I was going to touch on, like how religion is also, other than race, how much religion divides us. Right. Um, Christianity, again, promotes the sort of lifestyle that we live in America. While you look at Buddhist countries and they're some of the happiest countries in the world, like they promote that sort of life is suffering, live in the present. Um, it's so much different. Right. Um, well, what do you think about God? Not like beyond religion, just do like how we're talking about the simulation, like the, the visible universe, um, yeah. physics, like planets, yeah. all these different stars. Well, so like, what do you think about God? Well, in like my philosophical thinking, it's like who created us is what we call God. But then, like, what created God? And right. what created what created God? Uh, we could go on forever. So it's like, if we live in a simulation, could it just be like some sort of alien universe or alien planet that already discovered how to travel through the entirety of the universe and just, like, conquered us? I don't know. I don't know. Um, either way, though, we got to... I don't know. That shit's crazy. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I think I, I like to think that I, I've been a, recently. I've been on this whole like detachment of the ego thing. You're right, right. Uh, which, which is another thing. Really healthy. Yeah. Other than having like a really lame ass name, I also didn't want to call the podcast by my name because that's sort of like an like an ego thing. I don't want it to be about me. Like, you know, I don't want the podcast right. to have my name. Right. Um, but yeah, like the t the detachment of the ego sort of teaches you like we're just an energy like you're just living in a body and you'll go on and you'll live in a different body again that's another thing that's an abstract a name uh animals they recognize each other they know who their brother is who their mother is who their sister is um or who just a, a friend animal is but they don't have names right. we've sort of created that and that's sort of um fed our egos so that's another thing i'm, I'm never gonna just have that sort of value for myself like detachment of the ego i so believe in like you, reincarnation type shit do you believe that your higher self is god that uh, the, the thoughts that you have in your side of your head is god i don't know uh alan watts uh which you know is one of my favorite philosophers yes. um said that to think that we're not all like all of us individuals to think we're not god when we have the ability to absorb sound vision all these things in the world and create this insane reality and to think right. you're not god right. um i took that into consideration but at the same time it's like if you're on a detachment of the ego do you want to think you're god or at the same time like what do you think of yourself if you're someone who's being ruled over by another god um yeah. again we 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 either will or won't know when we die but for now it's just theories but what do, you, what do you think about psychedelics oh <laughs> i've done my fair share of research on them and i think the joe rogan says that they're a portal and i don't deny that i, I can't deny that um the fact that that it boosts a chemical in your brain and your brain on its own has the ability and, and access to create those sort of realities right. is insane like dmt um, like what do you it, think the, the fact that that's natural in your head yeah it is, has to that but you don't know about it it's like you don't have access to it but it's there so what is it um i don't know some sort of portal but so I, I was just going to say the positive thing about talking about different theories of the universe and afterlife and god and all that is that in the end we're never going to really find one mm. and that's what matters because that would sort of detach us from the dogma of religion mm. when people realize they don't know they um it doesn't 100 exist it's not proven 
we would all live a lot happier. We wouldn't be divided by religion when we don't, when you're not living a life for that afterlife that you're not sure of. You know what I mean by that? Right. Hmm. Um, hmm. But yes, psychedelics, uh, I think they're going to be a lot more common uh, in, in 20, 10 years, even less. So do you think that, so what do you think about the practices that these prophets from the religions had like journaling meditating fasting um the the other day you told me how uh most of these religions have for example things that are about abstinence and like not having sex right. and sort of that detachment from the body what's healthy for the soul right. and, and i remember telling you i was like well those are like the most natural things right. but at the same time what sets humans apart isn't our body it's our mind uh, exactly. So yeah. rethinking on that, yeah, like meditation, journaling, training your brain and, and, and keeping your soul healthy. Uh, yeah, definitely a, a good thing. So do you think that's like in touch with source, God, uh, energy, whatever we want to call it? Because it's all, I feel like it's still. Why not? Underwater. Why not? Um, I think because living life that way is a lot more positive than living life not believing in anything, you know? Mm. Uh, living that, that life for the soul is a lot healthier and is a lot more positive. So, mm. so yeah. what do you think about uh, consciousness? Well, it's like the one thing scientists can't define. Mm. Um, well, you know more about this, so you touch on what you think about I should be interviewing you. You're crazy. Let, let me know what your thoughts on consciousness are. I actually got a... Uh, uh -huh. Bless my notebook out. You know what I mean? We I know just you need to write it. everything down, which is a good I thing. Just wrote about it. We're getting exactly. <laughs> exactly. Gotta write it down. It's, it's a healthy practice. You know, that's... Absolutely. Like in school, we, we may have our judgments about the educational system, but the reason you write things down is because it's so much easier to remember. Exactly. I mean, it's reading. It's training your mind. All and right, because like you're moving your hand and like yeah. your brain like takes like, like everything. Training, it, just training the subconscious. Yeah. Exactly. Training the subconscious. Exactly. So like um, this says, uh, what is consciousness? And it's a bunch of different ones uh the two theories that like are proven about consciousness is we have a higher order theory and i really meditated on this uh it means consciousness is just a higher thought uh, order of thoughts and that means it's a thought about another thought about another thought and i'm thinking like man like these philosophers like lao tzu or buddha like the ones before uh bc even uh jesus like all these thoughts they're just higher order thoughts that they all stem from bigger like yeah. questions. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. How, um, so I really meditate on that. I'm like, wow, that's crazy that like some of the thoughts that we have on a day to day that maybe like a thousand, 2000 years ago, they're still thinking that type of, uh, that same thought, like, Oh, I need to survive. Like, Oh, where's my house? Where's my next food? Where's and my next meal? I'm reading this book called, it's the third book, which I guess kind of says I'm not reading it, but it's called uh, Sophie's World. And the very beginning, it's basically this girl who gets this random letter in the mail and it, it, she didn't know who it was from, what it was about, but it, it basically like asked her questions about what she thought life was. And she was kind of stumped, like, what is God? What is all? And those are questions that probably like Jesus and Buddha just asked, you know, um, I don't, uh, maybe this is me not wanting to believe in a sort of magical, the magical aspect of religion, but I don't think like they heard voices of God or they talked to God. I think they just think asked so? questions. I don't think so. I think they just yeah. asked questions. Like, where do we come from? uh is there a higher power they asked those questions and they they made those theories created those one movies. book i uh, i want you to read and i'll write it down for sure this dude was homeless at the time it's called a uh, conversation with god 
by uh, Neil me, Walsh. Okay. Conversation with God by Neil Walsh. And there's a part in here. See, I, I'm writing all the books that I should start reading whenever they're recommended. Oh, bro. I got a whole bookshelf for you. That, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> but definitely, definitely worth it. And basically, it, it was a dude that at the very beginning, he was just writing down a list. Um, he was all like, what did I deserve to have a life full of struggle? Like, he was just writing these things down. Like, I'm blaming yeah. you, God. And he even said, like, I'm going to blame you. Like, I'm, this is a letter to God. I'm, like, asking all these questions. And then suddenly, like, he was just looking at it. And he wanted to stop. But, like, his hand just didn't want to move for some reason. And he started writing. And it was like a dialogue oh, with shit. his – Yeah, it's crazy, bro. bro. I guess – I guess – I guess I'm going against my whole vision for the podcast, which is be open to all thoughts. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I don't deny that that's possible. I just, it's not what I believe in, but um, you got to, again, be open to that. And, and, it's, and it's crazy that for you to be open up to anything, mm -hmm. that creates the possibility for that to be a reality. And if you open up to everything, 80% of it might be useless and might be crap, but you, you're going to, if, if you're smart, you're going to get that 20%. But if you're closed off, you're never get, you're not even going to get that. Uh, so yeah, open-mindedness is the, the door to wisdom. So. Yeah. Yeah. And like, there's a saying, um, if you don't ask the question, it's already no. So like, mm. if you don't, if you don't uh, create the possibility, it's not going to happen. Like, yeah. if you don't, like, consciously... So I, I thought that was really interesting. So um, another theory is the identity theory. That physical things in this room sets off different triggers in our brain. And we can measure it with the EEG scan that, like, when a dog walks in, so they got this proven, bro. They um, they had a dog walk in, right? And they watched the brain light up, and had the person like the uh, pet the dog, and like you could see them like feeling it, like how soft the dog is, like uh, talk them talking to the dog, and then they took the dog out the room, and they said, okay, think about that dog like it just walked in the room and the same parts of the brain lit up Damn. So, so whether you are physically seeing it or mentally seeing it it's the, same those thing. Are, it's the exact same thing it's crazy that you say that because in a more spiritual sense that ties back to like you are what you think yep so Absolutely. so like you could let's say you're depressed you know, yeah. and, and you go to the beach and you're happy for a week and then you go right back to being depressed. If you were to just start recreating like and just positive affirmations, yeah. you would your your mentality would change. Exactly. Same thing with like the dystopia thing. If you're if you're yeah. thinking the future is going to be a dystopia, that's what it's going to be. Yep. Uh, but just 100%. thinking about that dog has the same like, effect. As I've ever thought like you buy a pair of shoes, right? You think, oh, man, these are the freshest shoes. And then you go to school and go, damn, I didn't know they had it. I didn't know they yeah. had them. Ah, oh, if I knew they had them, I wouldn't have got it. But because they're finally in your reality, or like your parents get a new car, and you go, man, this car is dope. And then you go driving, and then you see the car everywhere. It's not that those cars or those shoes weren't there. You just never noticed them because you, you didn't know never about noticed. it. Exactly. That's, that's the craziest thing. Something, something I would do is – whenever we would be in English class or whatever, I would learn a new word. Mm -hmm. I would search up the definition or whatever. And then all of a sudden I start seeing the, the word on exactly. billboards. And, <laughs> exactly. and I'm like, and I'm like, did that just happen? That's like, um, that's another philosophical thought. Solipsism, like thinking you're the, Oh, we can touch on that later. But like, uh, did those things just start appearing? Cause I knew about it. That's kind of selfish to think about it. 
or did now that you know about it you started like realizing it it's uh, where your brain actively seeks out it you don't even have to be with things like when you're thinking about that special someone like you're gonna recreate that same feeling of happiness that you have when you're with them exactly um but yeah uh that's crazy i, I was i read up on this philosophical thought called solipsism which let me search it up because I might not do the best job of describing it, but essentially it's like another, uh, so the, you just mentioned the identity theory, the higher power theory, and then solip, solipsism. Let me make sure I'm getting that right. It's the, the thought that you're all there is. So basically I'm the only thing that exists and you're like an illusion in my head. Mm -hmm. Like I created you and I created my parents and I created the world I live in and everything just revolves around me. So the actions that happen are directly uh, directed to me, if that makes sense. Um, which is really selfish, uh, very ego much. But yeah, like they, they, they have a little cartoon that says, excuse me, miss, you just disproved solipsism. It's like, there's no way my mind alone could have created something as beautiful as you. Yeah, like, yeah. Basically, everything around you is just an illusion. You're the only thing that exists. Uh, but I don't know what that, it, what, what that would be. But. We live in a duality where that is true, but it's also yeah. not true. Like, yeah. we go outside right now. You can say, man, it's super hot, and I can say, man, it's super cold. And because we live in that subjective reality where you have your own opinion, I have my own opinion, if we lived in an objective reality, it would just be hot or cold. Yeah, But because we have that where our sensory neurons pick up different things than other people, that it kind of is like that. Yeah, It is sure very is. egocentric, but it, it's, yeah. we, we, it's what, it's why we see the world the way we see it. Exactly. But sort of at the same time, being conscious of that and realizing that it's just hot or cold. Um, one thing I've been saying lately is like, everything just is, uh, there is no good and bad, like bad things don't happen to you. Good things don't happen to you. There's just like that balance. It just, right. it just is, you know? Uh, um, there's a saying I like to say, it's not, it is what it is. It, it is as it is. Uh, that it just, as it, it, it yeah. just is as like, it is. there's no, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that's a lot more, peaceful way to live life uh instead of um so like uh consciousness higher order personality we have a plasticity type of personality we're flexible uh, exploratory curious quick to adapt and then we have a stability where it's structured organized emotionally stable and focused and like uh we all like go and uh i feel like our brains are just big antennas and we just tap into certain frequencies and certain feelings of uh, energy. Mm -hmm. And that's like how we uh, produce. And then you could, you could uh, go into the thought that we're all connected because whatever I may feel from you and might impact me is yeah. then gonna impact how I am with someone else and someone else and someone else like, um, like us having this conversation might not have a big change on what we do tomorrow or in the next week. But if we had done something different tonight, maybe in 20,000 years, it's like this crazy domino effect, like something different right. happened. Um, and the fact that in 10,000 10, years, a thousand years from now, our great grandchildren go, damn, on December 10th, 2020, or I mean, October 10th, 2020, like they were talking about this, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's crazy is that philosophers from hundreds of years ago, uh, that's 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 why I love philosophy. The things they were saying still apply now. Exactly. And they didn't know what the fuck phones were. They didn't have any of the technology we have now. But it's that that curiosity, that thought. Um, it applies to everything. Uh, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, gotta be crazy. That's that's another thing. Like, again, I'm only 17 years old. You're you're 22, right? Yeah, I uh, just turned 23. 
uh, last week, two weeks ago. Oh, shit. Well, happy late birthday. I mean, <laughs> but, like, we're still super young. Right. And, again, like, most podcasts, like, someone just comes on and tells, like, the story of their life. I don't, I don't really have a story of my life. Cause, like, right, cause exactly, you know, exactly. Yeah. So this channel is going to be, like, a time capsule seeing how I grow over time and as well as the guests and how thoughts develop. Um, right. Exactly. And it's crazy how articulate we are at such a young age. Yeah. Or just the thoughts we're having. Right. Exactly. And it's all with the ability of the internet. Yeah. We're we're blessed. Yeah. Truly. We're blessed. Truly blessed. Um, But yeah, like my parents have stories from when they were kids and how they were as kids, but obviously they don't have videos and they have pictures but a, a limited amount like just today i mean I, me and my mom were getting almost kind of emotional because she brought up uh she was talking about this friend she had and then she decided to take out a bunch of pictures um that she had from like the 70s like from the 70s to the 90s more like 80s to the 90s and it was like damn like they really just took a picture and, and it was printed out um and of, of one moment but now like just today, my dad, who's like 60 some years old, has a fucking iPhone X. Our cat was like hiding in this really weird spot and he took a picture of it. And it's like, if a cat was hiding in a weird spot 50 years ago, you would have never taken a picture of it. You would have been just like, wow. But like now we're gonna start taking pictures of every little thing and videos of every little thing where nothing's gonna have value anymore. Nothing's gonna be like special. Um, but not necessarily. Because now your great grandchildren are gonna come look, look at your this. dad and go, damn, like this is what they're living on. That's the cat. That's the famous cat, Grandpa <laughs> Cisco. We talk about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and same with this. Uh, but, um, uh, like, with uh, the thing that I guess is doing the most harm to society right now is probably social media. Uh, technology is obviously doing harm politics is doing harm but at a no, at a personal the level harm? the food go ahead elaborate on that uh artificial uh flavoring preservatives uh antibiotics um coloring coloring um and then you can go into the the spiritual way of oh the animals are feeling this type of way um pollution from like plastics and oils and stuff in the environment um sugar is just as a more addictive than cocaine um like the food is impacting because we are what we eat for sure and like even the fluoride in our uh shower and our toothpaste uh just like it's like we hear stories in these religions of people living 200 300 400 years old and like we look at us and go like man like what the fuck happened (laughs) Um, yeah uh, so much of our food is just artificial Uh, Like now something that's becoming more popular is like vegan and they're eating this meat that tastes exactly like meat looks exact, but it's not. Um, It's like, that's, that's healthier. Being vegan is healthier, but you're eating something that's made in the lab Um, to the environment. The amount of cows, the amount of meat we eat is it's harmful to the environment. Yeah. But I'm just saying like on like the ingredient level, like, we don't eat natural food anymore. And, and I'm someone who's always thought like every, if as natural as you can keep it, the better. Like if I have a headache, I'm not going to take an aspirin. I, I don't like to. Would it take the pain away? Yeah. But I'm like, it's going to go away in an hour anyway. Like I could just lay in bed and I'll go like, why am I going to take chemicals for it? Um, the more natural way uh, is always better. Like people don't even cook anymore. Since we have a consumer society, people work more so they can buy more shit. And so nobody's, we, we lose things as small as just going home and, and taking the time to cook an actual meal. Yep. Uh, 
and that's natural food. That's healthy stuff. Now, when you go into a store, how much shit is frozen? Like you could just put it in an oven in a microwave and you got food for the night. But other than just like the artificial ingredients, just mentally, how is that also affecting us? Not going um, and cooking and preparing something. Of uh, uh, free radicals. It's getting more metals in our system that we need. And just like how metals uh, rust, uh, they rust inside our brain and it actually affects us where um, it, it develops Alzheimer's quicker. Um, uh, the cholesterol in our, our food uh, builds up a lot of plaque. Uh, mucus driven foods too, like the same mucus you spit up, uh, mm -hmm. that's throughout every organ of your body. Throughout every digestive tract, there's that mucus everywhere. And like uh, a lot of people that are overweight, it's just a collective of mucus. And mucus is the first sign of any type of disease. It's like the first underlining symptom of any type of infection, that's, any type of illness, any of it. Like mucus is like the start. That's another thing like um, obesity. Crazy. Like, my dad can tell me like when he goes to school, there, there was always that, that one like chubby fat kid, you know, right. it was always that one, but everyone else was, you know, in shape, ate healthy. Right. I mean, again, we didn't, they didn't have all the processed foods that we have today. That, that's what they say is the most dangerous processed yeah. foods. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And it's, it's so unhealthy. And especially like you think about it, like all that weight, is pushing your organs too, like compressing your organs. And, and this, this is something that frustrates me. And, and if it's offensive, I'm sorry, but it's sort of, again, that comfortable lifestyle. Um, and the, the way we show support nowadays is by commenting that you're beautiful on your Instagram post when really that, that's nothing. But like people that are, I'm sorry, but are overweight. And it's sort of like, this is just my body. Like, yeah, some people have slower metabolisms, have different body types, but that's not an excuse to be unhealthy. Right. You can exercise, you can do things, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. And it's just like, oh, well, this is how I am. It's like, okay, but this, you're damaging your body. And it's crazy that like, people will go like, I'm big boned, but we all got the same skeleton. It's just like- Yeah, you're just not taking just care like, of yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and again, creating abstract fake support on social media, but like these processed foods are depreciating their motivation their even their energy. Like you, yeah. you ate something and got so fucking full. You're like, fuck, I don't want to move. Like, yeah. and they're like, these foods are programmed for us to be, uh, like that. Sedent yeah. Sedentary. Um, again, like, and, and to an extent you can really eat whatever you want, as long as you're exercising and staying active. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fasting, bro. The homie, he's as skinny as me, maybe 130, right? He did a 10-day fast. Wait, what? <laughs> bro, he did a 10-day fast, just water, and he was still shitting out solid. Isn't that unhealthy? Though? Isn't like the limit of a water fast like five days? Or he's just different? Uh, I think it was like longer than that. I think it's like 20, Wouldn't 30 days. Wouldn't say it was days. like. He must have been hungry. No, he said after the first two days, it just went away. And it, I'm pretty sure, like, I, I, I watched a video on someone who did, like, a five-day water fast, and it's almost like first, second day might be miserable. But, like, on that third day, not only is it okay, but you also get, like, a, a surge of energy. Yeah. Um, Bro, I, I see this thing where – there's this dude that was 300 pounds and he did a, a year fast with just waters and vitamins like IVs and shit. And he lost 150 pounds. He lost half his body weight. He, he lost 150 pounds, which is healthy, but I don't know how, definitely not recommending for people to just do no, IVs no, and no, vitamins. Definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, but on some crazy scenarios that like yeah, the yeah, yeah. bodies and it, mm -hmm. it, it thrives uh, they said that we tested with every single animal, reducing their calorie intake by 30%. And 
and they all live 30% longer. And but, it was only yeah. It was only humans that we haven't tested yet. What's crazy about like those five day water fasts and like not eating for two days yet, like on that third day, getting extra energy. Uh, I think there's something you can learn from it other than, you know, what you're doing it for health reasons or whatever. What you can learn from it is that essentially what's happening is your body resorting to its primal instinct. Like right. there was a time when we were not nearly at the top of the food chain. Exactly. And so, and, and we didn't just go to a store and buy food. Like we had to go out and hunt. There was a time when agriculture didn't exist. We had to go out and get food. And there were times when humans would have to go days without food. Right. And that surge of energy is like a, a survival method. Um, right. So I guess doing the five day fast, you can also, you know, good for your mental to sort of realize that, you know. They said that uh, the only things that we can control are what we say, what we think, and what we eat. Yeah. You Everything can't control else. what goes on around you. Exactly. That's, an, that's another thing, sort of to relieve stress. Like, everyone's stressing about things that just aren't in their control. Like, right. this always a balance. Like, that doesn't mean what you can control, be obsessive about it, and over control it. But right. sort of just, again, don't, don't attach yourself and stress over things that you can't change. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I was going to mention something about the, the fasting, but I forgot. Um, oh yeah. Also another thing, like since we're taught what to think and not how to think right. we, when, when it comes to finding solutions to issues, we're very like linear. So it's like a lot of people in this country, like they get knee surgery. Um, and my dad knew a guy who got knee surgery like four times and he still had knee pain. And it's like, bro, it's not your knees. It's the fact that you're overweight. Right. <laughs> like all right. that weight is weighing down on your knees. But right. like, it's like that sort of like quick linear thinking, like, let me just get the surgery when it's not like the core issue. Um, it's like, if your car's making sound, you just play the music louder <laughs> instead of, instead of go, take it to the mechanic and figure out what's wrong. Um, or like um, when you're in the car and the light pops up and then you take a hammer and hit the light thinking that that's going to yeah. take the light <laughs> instead of just fixing the problem exactly <laughs> uh, yeah kind of concerning but that's that's because we're not taught how to think right um, right and uh, but what I love about the day and age that we live in is that anything that we think of because supposedly only 5% of our day is conscious. All 95% of our day is subconscious routines. Um, I got this book. I just, As we're talking. I highly recommend this book. It just got um, like some drawings and like quotes from like different mm -hmm. dope as fuck, bro. Dope as fuck. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a page in here that said that 95% of our day is subconscious. Okay. Okay. Right. According to Nat, uh, Nat, National Science Foundation, a average person has about 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day. Of those, of those, 80% are negative and 95% are repetitive thoughts. Uh, if we repeat those negative thoughts, we think negatively, uh, think negative way more than a positive thought. So 80%, 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day that we yeah. have those thoughts every day. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and most of those times are like stressing things. Um, it's like, it's like the idea that happiness is a choice you right. know like right. working up to a destination to one event isn't what's going to make you happy right. um it's just choosing to be happy but right. yeah and we're that's that's one thing that we are very much in control of our thoughts yep. if more than anything so and those kind of books are not rap. necessarily not until i stop listening to rap get mm -hmm. off social media 
and stop mm -hmm. watching the news and TV and TV shows and movies as much. That's what changed your thoughts. That's what changed my thoughts to where it's my thoughts, not the world, the elites, the famous people, the people trying to get my money thoughts. And we, we've also designed a society that values, uh, for example, the elites, which I'm not trying to say in a negative connotation, just people that are popular or have money and power, like, uh, like a clothing ad, like it's gotta be some athlete. Uh, if not, it's like irrelevant. You know, if some random dude is modeling the shoes, who cares? Like it's gotta be Michael Jordan or Travis Scott. Like who the fuck goes to McDonald's for a burger? I mean, people go, but I'm just saying never in the amounts that they did when it was suddenly when Travis McDonald's Scott. McDonald's sells out, right? That's yeah. crazy. Um, uh, but if people could think for themselves, they would know that that's not relevant. That that wouldn't happen. But again, those people know that they can control like that. Uh, yeah, crazy. Let's let's crazy. hope this podcast does does big things for the world. Cause oh well, it will, it will. Just and, and just it's gonna show. Talking, it's, yeah, oh, go just ahead. Just us go ahead. talking like this is gonna change our family lives. So being and, able to have this conversation with like the people around us, our homies, uh, like yeah. our girlfriends, like it's like it's so influential just to be on this like way of thinking. Yeah, and 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 most importantly, uh, surrounding yourself with people you love and people who love you. Like I honestly think like you know like love is one of the most important things and. But like all those people that are commenting on your Instagram posts, like those aren't the people that right. you love. Right. Uh, so again, detaching yourself from technology also, and especially during quarantine, when we're not really seeing that many people or any at all, you find right. out who, who the real ones are. Right. And, and I've it's told you this, you've sort of been someone who started pushing me right. and inspiring me. And it's going to be crazy because, you know, I, I want to say on this podcast, like, if we get there, but you know what, fuck it. I'm going to say like, when we get there, when we get there, exactly. when we get there and we got exactly. that, space, um, you're going to be able to look back. And I, I think that's, what's going to be most in inspiring to see that it was literally just a couple of 17, 20 year olds in, in their bedroom doing a zoom call that exactly. got them there. But, but exactly. since people only see the big picture, they never take that first step forward, but it's like, this is how you got to start. Yep. And then eventually you That's upgrade that. and, and you get there and you grow. Uh, so hopefully this is also as much as, as it is a source of new thought and education, also a source of inspiration for pe for people that just they're, they're constantly thinking about their goals and what they enjoy, but never act on it. You right. know, and then there's exactly. a lot of people that exactly. preach crap that they don't even believe in. Right. Uh, so j just being authentic, you know, there, there's the, that saying, uh, a thousand mile journey starts with one step and yeah. all, all we need is that one step and because if you it. never take it you're not not going to get anywhere exactly um gotta lay the first brick exactly so. exactly instead of trying to build a whole brick wall just lay one brick at a time and eventually you'll get to that you'll wall. have it yeah you know? uh but it's almost like that's that's daunting to people yeah yeah. Um, and yeah, obviously, like you were able to break out of that life of habits. And it's not like right away, you took a first step and you're on your way to chase your dreams. But you're, we're all on the right track. You'd be surprised, bro. You'd be surprised how fast you can align yourself with your thoughts, with your body, with your energy, with the stuff that you're eating, how fast it'll start manifesting. Like I did that in July 2017. August in just a month i was meditating thinking of nothing and then first thought that came to my head was intern at freeman freeman runs las vegas pretty much in entertainment i'm like man where did this thought come from uh i never put these words together before i never thought of this i'm like where did this even come from uh and i kept meditating and i literally saw myself walking through the convention center talking to sony talking to audi talking about their new car, their new TV, why mm -hmm. they put the light to shine it that way or what. I'm like, man, this don't sound like a bad idea. I go downstairs and I tell my dad, he's like, what? And I tell him what I see. And he's like, let me make a call. He calls his boss. 
and uh, this is like the head rigging director at Freeman. He goes, what? Come to my office. I go to his office, and I, I'm like 19 at the time. I'm like, what? You want to intern here and be part of this company? Be like, you want to like be a high level? Like, you want your own Freeman? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, what? He's like, you're 19. Go be on the beach. And I'm like, God, this is what I want to do. No, I'm like, and like because I had that that. Uh, manifestation in my thought through my uh, meditation it created in my you were in control of your thoughts exactly Um, bro it's so crazy it's not like like, it it didn't present itself to you but just by thinking about it 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 happened naturally you know yeah um and that's crazy that i didn't know it was like a month just a month after you were sort of just living that that habit that's with like affirmations uh, mm-hmm. positive thinking, um, yeah. working out, changing my diet, uh, listening to millionaires talk on YouTube, like podcasts of self-development. Like it, it took like a lot of like belief in myself for me to get get there. You know what I mean? And as much as we talk about detachment from the ego to, to get to that sort of uh, greatness, I guess you need to have an ego because yeah. You can have the whole world believe in you, but it's just, it's gotta be you believing in it. Um, yeah. But yeah, and it's, it's, all, it's a shame that it's almost seen as it's taboo, like weird to meditate and to watch like motivate. Like it's just seen as weird, you know, like my English teacher, shout out to her uh, in my AP Lit class. She like took a moment. Shout out to AP Lit. Yeah, oh God, she like presented her screen and it was like this uh, timer and she was like telling us to do breathing exercises, like almost like meditation. That was dope as fuck. Everybody turned their cameras off. I know everybody just got back on the game and didn't do it. Right. But like, I mean, I was just there like with my eyes closed breathing. Like she yeah, was trying to help. Dope. But it's I like, really like it's that. Like, like you're 17 years old, like that's embarrassing. Like uh, on a Google Meet, you know, doing breathing that's exercises dope. with your teacher. But like, that's those are good things you know i think meditation is going to be a new health health revolution like back in the early 2000s how they're like oh you got to work out you got to work out i Mm -hmm. think meditation is going to be like oh you got to meditate like so first it's like working out the body and now it's going to be working out the mind exactly um yeah and also like people are passionate about fucking keeping up with the kardashians and what their celebrities are posting on instagram but like be passionate about your health. Be passionate exactly. about exercising and what you're doing and guarantee. Just your mental health. If you're happy, fuck, oh, yeah. who cares if you're overweight? Just be happy. People are just so miserable. Oh, nowadays. yeah. I, know. I mean, if you're, if you're overweight and you're unhappy, you're going to stay there. Yeah. If you're happy, you might stay there, but you're, at least you're fucking happy. Right. You know, you're making exactly. the most of your life and, and just not caring about what other people think, too. But, um, yeah, again, it's supposedly they say, like, our generation is the one that has the most depression, the most anxiety. It's like, well, they're doing a bunch of articles on that, but are we doing anything on what we can do to change that? Right. right. Uh, if kids started meditating, kids started thinking, we started giving less homework so kids can go out, uh, do exercises, whatever it may be. But, no, it's just we know social media is a problem. We know kids are depressed, uh, but let's just keep doing the same thing. Right, right. So if people, if, if hopefully people have the patience to listen to all, all the whole hour or two hours of this, you know, you might not be interested in all of it because you might be a hard Christian and you don't want to <laughs> listen to us talk about uh, God, or you might, you might be from the right. So you want to hear, you don't want to hear me talk about the left on politics. That's okay. But if you listen, you you might be missing out on something at the end that you might have gotten from it. Exactly. So, and there's that saying that uh, anybody can teach you anything, even if it's what not to do. Like yeah, a mom can teach you something, even if it's just like how not yeah. to live. 100%. Like my dad was telling me a story today. And I guess you could uh, say that it was a negative thing about his past. And he was like, maybe I shouldn't have told you that. And I was like, that's exactly what you should be telling me. Because if not, I'm not, I'm, I might repeat the same mistake. It's like, yeah, you can always learn something 
from somebody if it's mm-hmm. different. Always, always. So don't limit yourself always. off to that. Um, but yeah, it's like parents just tell their kids like, you can't do this, you can't do this, this is bad, whatever. But we're never like explaining it. We're never um, telling them the details about it. So kids just like, there's also like, again, like you said, like when your parents tell you to do something and you're a teenager, you do the opposite. So kids are right. going to get curious and do the opposite and make mistakes. Yeah. Um, but we need to educate, uh, which we don't do. And I, I like the saying, uh, knowledge, you know, how knowledge is power, but yes. they, they say that uh, learning is a superpower. Like if you, if you're willing to learn, then mm-hmm. like sky's the limit. Like there's no, there's no stopping you. But if like, I mean, you, with all that shit about the universe, the sky is not the limit. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the sky is not even the limit anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to have to update that. But yeah. Um, curiosity, asking questions. I, I mentioned this in my intro video, which I, I don't really want to hype up because it was like, like you said, like you have friends that just sit in front of a camera and start talking. Uh, I started doing that. And I mentioned this Confucius quote that it was um, the man who ask a question is uh, a fool for a minute, but the man who never asks a question is a fool for life. So just be okay with sounding stupid. Go out there, learn, ask questions, be curious. Cause if not, you're just gonna stick to the same knowledge you have now. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so. I got to get more into reading, man. I've been slacking. I'm not going to lie. It's hard. Bro, uh, I have dyslexia, bro. Like really? that's why, that's why I do so much audio books and so much YouTube and so much seminars. Cause because helps. like I can read a chapter, bro. And I'd be like stuck on the chapter. And like, um, uh, it, it just, it, it's good practice, good discipline to learn different ways. But like, that's what I'm saying. We shower, we fucking, we get out of brush the bed the same way, brush your teeth, like all those things we do on a day to day, you can just add somebody talking about money, talking about happiness, talking about some uh, philosophical, uh, some philosophy, and it yeah. just adds to your, adds yeah. to your reality. Did you like have some sort of help in school since you were dyslexic or no? I had tutoring. My mom, my parents made me do tutoring. I had a tutor. I, uh, I didn't even know how to do syllables, bro. Like I didn't mm-hmm. even know how to break down mm-hmm. words to sound them out. And this was my sophomore year. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't even know how to break down words in my sophomore year. And and now you're reading. Exactly. More than, I mean, that's another thing. Like people don't read nowadays and I'm definitely guilty of this. Like my parents tried pushing books into me. And I would hate it. I would hate it. I was, I've always been really active and energetic and just sitting down and reading a book was not my cup of tea, but I I get it now. Uh, And now with phones, you know, you're just, I I remember when I used to be on TikTok, like I'd be like, okay, I'm going to watch 30 minutes and then it'd be three fucking hours. And I didn't even know when you could have spent at least 20 of those reading a book and it would have given you more. They said if um, you yeah. read like 10 pages a day, you'll read like 35 books a year. Yeah. But it's, crazy. that's crazy how we don't read those 10 pages. Because yeah. we're like, oh, a book is too much. But we end up reading zero pages or zero <laughs> books a year. <laughs> exactly. Or the one that you're forced to do for school. But no, I, uh, I actually didn't know that. My mom was dyslexic too. And she tells me like it was really hard for her and like yeah. learning a new language too. So well, I'll be seeing like peas and Q's backwards, B's and D's. I'll put whole sentences. I'll rearrange whole sentences in my head, bro. It's crazy. Is it like a visual thing or like you're, like when you're interpreting it, it just switches it Just when I'm interpreting it. That's crazy. Um, that's insane. Bro, but that's it. You're working on it, you know? You don't just say, ah, oh, exactly. fuck it. I'm not gonna read them. Not for me. Exactly. But uh, another alternative, is audiobooks, uh, YouTube videos, yeah. seminars, like being able to like Listen. impact your impact your brain some different mm-hmm. way. Like we're so focused on our body, but when do we ever like exercise our mind? Like constantly yeah. updating our mind. And and that's the thing. Like some people do exercise their body; they do work out, but then when they're exercising their mind, it's dog shit. Exactly. Um, 
yeah, you're just feeding it crap. So, yeah, well, that, that's that's good for you. I need to start reading more because well, I'm, I'm slacking. Documentaries are valuable because because reading we only learn ten percent. We only mm -hmm. retain ten percent mm -hmm. um, because it's only visual. Uh, listening is twenty percent, uh, mm -hmm. but seeing and listening is fifty percent. Having a conversation, being able to talk to somebody, uh, that's seventy percent. Being able to uh, actually perform it. And be able to like produce from it. That's when you you absolutely are learning from that. Like, and uh, it's crazy you say that because I guess that's another thing that's detaching us from humanity. That now we just text, and the most sort of um, emotion we get is an emoji, right. or capital letters. Right. right. Um, I mean, bro, I even the fucking them. spell check. I don't even know how to spell words. I just type in like the first few letters of the, and the word. And just, I, exactly. Yeah. Or like the predict text, but yeah, yeah. yeah like oh, uh, like you can't you can't feel tone of voice through through a text. No right. mannerisms, no body language, and like these are all th like reading bo body language is so important too. Yeah. Um, just human contact in general. Unfortunate that we're sort of passing a difficult time in history, but hopefully the world's <sighs> a better place. By I'm the praying, end of the, yeah um because i mean again like people are meeting up and shit but like concerts uh sports games uh, i guess are irrelevant but like, th th those things are good for people right uh just being completely open to just contact again is going to be great once this is all over so i'm praying bro i'm praying that it ends soon yeah 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 I mean, I don't care how long we got to wait for the vaccine, just that it's a good one and that it's effective, you know, not rushed. Bro, I watched this the Bill Nye podcast this morning, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize how crucial this election is, is that if Trump gets elected, like, beyond, like, I'm not, I don't care who wins, I kind of do, now that I saw Bill Nye talk, that only... Biden has a, a plan for global warming. If Trump gets in, uh, we won't hit that deadline of zero carbon emissions by 2040 or That's by 2050. Worries. They literally have them, like they got you in 4K, bro. Like they got a video of Trump at this meeting and they're asking him about climate change. And he literally says, science doesn't know. <laughs> Uh, it's like you do like he has this sort of god image of himself and the people that heavily support him have a god image for him too that's scary um even yeah, gonna be i think it's not even him though bro i think it's the oil companies the the real rich people oh yeah they don't want to give it up yeah but that runs out we got to start thinking longer term you know what i'm saying like yeah. those people they're going to die in 20 years they don't care yeah, exactly. And, and exactly. again, it's all because it's, it's all because of money. If we didn't value money like we do, that wouldn't be an issue anyways. We'd value the earth. Yeah. Uh, but no, and, and another thing, like when Pence, uh, the vice president said, what China did to America with coronavirus, to America, what the fuck are you talking about? It affected the yeah. whole world. Right. Um, yeah, again, individually, neither option is really good, but one is a little bit more conscious about the earth and the division that we're living in today, while the other one promotes that division. And it's just going to be like more oil, more gas, fuck global warming. It's not real. Science doesn't know. Uh, it's hard, bro. It's, it's hard to be optimistic in a very nihilistic world. Yeah, um, but you have to be. But we have to be. That's where the leaders come from. The leaders come yeah. from the optimism, the positivity. 100%. And like the fact that, like how you're saying that I won't even uh, keep entertaining dystopia because I don't want to live there. 
Mm-hmm. It's like, that's big. That's like a, a way of consciousness of like saying, I'm putting my foot down. Like, this is what mm-hmm. I deserve. This is what my family deserves. This is what I'm going to live. Be about yeah. Like to have the whole country, let alone the whole world, be on that same type of mentality of like the betterment of humanity, betterment of the future generations. And like it it would change overnight. The whole planet would just change overnight. Yeah. And if we would just drop, uh, this is something, all humans are prejudiced, but the thing is like realizing your judgments and, and making sure you don't act on them like racism, like, come on, like, how do we still have that, dude? Right. Right. Especially when, like, mixed marriages are at an all-time high, like, all that's right. going to happen is we're going to eventually live in a, in a world of one race. We're right. all going to mix with each other. Like, we can fly to the other side of the country in, a, in less than a day. And, yep. you know, you might meet someone, like, whatever it may so be. With, with Elon Musk be. in uh, Starship, you're going to be able to fly from... Uh, london to japan in 45 minutes imagine (laughs) well five years five years bro it's gonna be like driving to the store to travel the fucking world yep um yeah exactly and and yeah and, and to think that races still matter like as cliche as it is, it's it's the human race. That's what matters. Cause yes, exactly. Especially the society that we're entering, if we don't start thinking that way, uh, we're fucked. Yeah. But again, don't think that way. Think that it's going to be okay and but we're going to change. Like, I love that you keep uh, saying it and I really need to start like remembering is that we, by having this conversation, just one person talking to another person, talking yeah. to another person, it... it fuels that see that the idea of like man yeah. this could be a positive world well, well you're the one that said it like i talk to you and you know 10 people and you might send this to 10 people and only one watches it but that one that watches it might be interested and he knows another 10 people exactly. and so effectively we're communicating with everybody exactly. um, and that's easier now than it was ever so yeah again we don't change the world magically all at once it's just person to person but again like what we were talking about at the very beginning we don't even talk to the people we sit next to at the park how are we going to change the world person to person but since everybody is full of anxiety thinking big picture we just it's again the same thing as chasing your career taking that first step same thing with spreading positivity and and just creating connections it's the same thing for us being this woke, bro, it really takes us to be at that park bench to put our phone in our pocket and say, hey, how you doing? What's up? Yeah. yeah. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Because like, <laughs> we, we know, you know what I mean? And, 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 and I wasn't, I wasn't like this, uh, like, I'm, uh, for, the, for the friends that know me, I'm very social, for sure. <laughs> and I talk a lot, which is why I think a podcast is perfect. Um, but like, yeah, I would also be af- sort of afraid to talk to new people. Although in the hallways, I used to, I used to remember like freshman year, I would walk in the hallways and just like go like this to random ass people and dance. Yeah, some funny. people yeah, would, yeah. some people wouldn't. But it's yeah. like that sort of like releasing that fear. And I, I obviously had a lot of time on my hands over the summer, and I watched a lot of Yes Theory, this one mm. channel. Yes Theory is a good and show. Their whole, good, yeah, good their whole, channel. Their whole, their whole thing is like going out and meeting random people and doing crazy right. shit with random people. But people are scared to do that. But like watching right. them, you realize the world isn't a bad place. We right. want to think it is, but it's not. It's really not. And there are people that have bad intentions. There might be a Ted Bundy out there that you got to be careful with. But again, no. Uh, just put your phone down and talk to the person next to you at the park. Uh, what's going to hurt? You know, and if, and if they see you as confident and going out there and just talking to them, they're probably going to let go too and talk to you. Exactly. But by not opening that up, you're going to. Or like that, there's that theory when like somebody behind you sees you do something for somebody else and that, that inspires them to go like, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was cool. Or just, or just thanking someone when they open a door for you, they're going to open the door for another person too. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but, but not doing those little social acts is what's going to close us off even more. And another thing is like kids nowadays want to have some sort of mental illness. Like all kids just 
it's like, since we have no value in our lives, since we're all in social media, we want to be special. Like we want to be victimized. You know, you felt that right. way at some point right. and you, and you yeah, were opening absolutely. up and you were like, I'm not a victim. Exactly. Um, but like kids are like, I got, uh, again, we do have the most depressed and anxious generation, but some kids just aren't. And they say they're depressed. Um, crying doesn't mean you're depressed. That's a regular, like showing of emotion. You need to learn from that. Um, being embarrassed and shy doesn't mean you have social anxiety. Right. Like the amount of people I hear say they have social anxiety because they're shy. Like, no, you don't. There's this girl at my school who I had literally never heard her say a word. Right. Like I've talked to her because I like mess with her. I'm like, what's up? Like, how's your day? Like, she doesn't speak. Like that girl has social anxiety. Right. Right. But again, we got to like let go of our egos, us wanting to have something. And just right. connect, bro. And I hope that... The, the people that I try to invite come back and look at this and think like, fuck it. I'll talk to them. I'll be a guest right. and just, yeah, just talk to people and learn from them. Bro, the fact that, that you have this vision, it's already, they don't even know it yet. And they're about to be impacted. Like it's oh, yeah. inevitable. It's I'm inevitable. telling you right now, random person that nobody knows on the internet you're going to be a part of something big. Uh, big. That's it. Big. Um, I'm kind of scared because I don't know how I'm going to keep getting guests. So I might have a lot of frequent guests until I have the sort of following where I can invite bigger people. Uh, but I'm just going to keep advertising myself. You know, right it's now. free. You DMing a hundred people. Emailing a hundred people. All you need people. is one. All you need is All one. Need exactly. Is and you know what? If I have to be an annoying little bitch, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Bro, I, I, I see Gary V said that this dude DM'd him 20 times before it like became like actually like on the top where he picked out that, that DM. Like it, sometimes that's what it takes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and I guess I, I, I created social media accounts for just for the podcast and I'm only going to access it because I, I, you, you need it. Uh, yeah. for the, the, the path I'm going down, I need, that's somewhere where I can use it to my advantage, right. uh, somewhere where I can use it for a positive thing where I'm right. not following a thousand people and consuming craps and memes. Exactly. Um, again, like that's the thing about technology. It can, it's so beautiful. It's been able to connect everybody across the world. Like we have family in Europe and in South America, and we wouldn't have been able to talk to them 40 years ago, but we can now. Right. Exactly. Um, so yeah, using it for something. What a time positive. to be alive. What a time oh, yeah. to be alive. What a time to be alive. Um, yeah, everybody who's saying 2020 shit, you're making it shit. Make it positive. Do something you love. Go out there, exercise, meditate, educate yourself, and make it better. Make don't it just better. don't just sit there and say it's crap because you can't go out and there's a pandemic and it's Trump versus Biden. Shut the fuck up and go do something. Yep. All right. And spread right. love. Let's do this. All, All right. right. So I think that's going to bring us to thank, the end of the podcast. Th thank you for having me, bro. No. Thank you for coming start, on. The start of a long journey, bro. I'm with you, oh, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm supporting you all the way. 100%. We'll have you back on, too. Thank you, bro. All right, guys. Thank you, bro. If you made it this far, sending you a huge kiss on the lips. And stick around for the next one. All right, brother.